So by the end of this video, you will be able to solve rational equations. So remember how you solve proportions? We're going to be using a similar idea to solve rational equations today. So when you solve for variables and proportions, you use this idea called crisscross multiply, right? Some of you may call it the butterfly method. So what you do is you multiply these two numbers together. So 5 times 3, that gives you 15. And then you multiply what's over here, x and 4, so you get 4x. And then all you do is solve the resulting equation. So for example, here I can divide both sides by 4, and that's how you get the value of x, right? 15 over 4 equals x. Um, if you would prefer, you can make that a decimal. 15 over 4 is 3.75. So that's the idea of crisscross multiply or the butterfly method, whatever you call it. So what is a rational equation? So we've been working with rational expressions a lot. Um, you have a rational equation when you take two rational expressions and you set them equal to each other. So like it's shown in this example here. So this is how you solve rational equations. So you're going to crisscross multiply, solve for the variable, and then as always, we're going to check for extraneous solutions. So let's try solving this problem for x. So you may be wondering, why did she say crisscross multiply, but there's not a fraction on both sides? Well, remember, if you have a whole number, you can just put it over 1. Right, so I'm going to put this over 1, and then I'm going to use that crisscross multiply method. So I'm going to multiply 5 and x squared, so that gives me 5x squared. And then on the right side, I'm multiplying 1 and then x squared plus 3x. Okay, so that gives me 5x squared equals x squared plus 3x. So what we're going to do now is going to move all our terms to one side. So we have x squared, so I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. So when we do that, that x squared, remember that's a 1x squared. So 5x squared minus 1x squared is going to be 4x squared. So we have 4x squared equals, and then we have 3x. So now we need to set this equal to 0, right? Because whenever we're working with quadratics, we always set it equal to 0. So I am going to subtract 3x from both sides. And so that gives me 4x squared minus 3x equals 0. So now I can solve this. I'm going to use factoring um, because notice that these two terms have a GCF of x, right? I can factor an x out of both terms. So I'm going to pull out that x, and then I'm going to divide the two terms by x. And so that gives me x times 4, and then x squared over x becomes just x, and then minus, and then we have 3, and then x and x cancel. So that equals 0. So remember, by the zero product property that we used back when we were solving quadratics, that told us if a times b equals zero, so if we multiply two things and get zero, that means that either one of them will equal zero. So if we do this, we can say that either x equals zero or 4x minus 3 equals zero. So x equals zero is a solution. So here we're going to solve by adding 3 to both sides. So that will give us 4x equals 3, and then we can divide both sides by 4. And so that gives us x equals 3 over 4. So now, remember, we always want to go and plug back into our original problem to make sure we don't have any of those extraneous solutions, right? So we're always going to be checking for those and make sure that we don't have any of those in this problem. Well, if we plug in x equals 0, we have, let's see, x squared plus 3x. I'm just writing the original problem. x squared plus 3x over x squared equals 5. If we plug in 0, we get 0 squared plus 3 times 0 over 0 squared equals 5. So that tells me that 0 plus 0 over 0 equals 5, and we have one of those 0 in the denominator situations, okay? So we don't want one of those. We don't want the 0 over 0 equals 5 business. So that means that x equals 0 is one of my extraneous solutions. So what we're going to do is we're going to then plug in our other solution. So we're going to um, plug in are 3 fourths. Okay, so if we plug in 3 fourths, we have 3 fourths squared plus 3 times 3 fourths over 3 fourths squared. And we're checking if that equals 5. 3 fourths squared is 9 over 16. And so we have plus 3 times 3, so that's 9 over 4. And that is over 9 over 16. We're checking if that equals 5. Uh, we can add these two if we make a common denominator, right? So that's going to be, let's see, 36 over 16. And so that is going to be 9 over 16 plus 36 over 16 over 9 over 16. 
Um, and so 9 plus 36 is 45. So we have 45 over 16 divided by 9 over 16. But instead, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So that's going to give me 45 over 9, which does equal 5. Okay, so this tells me that 5 equals 5. So that is the correct solution. Okay, so x equals 3 over 4 is the only solution to this problem. That x equals 0 is one of those extraneous solutions. Okay, so remember that's why we always go back and plug in and check. So now you can go ahead and pause the video and try this example on your own. So here we have one of those situations. I know it doesn't look like a fraction, but we can turn it into one. So we're going to crisscross multiply, right? So we have 4 times x squared minus 1 equals, and then on the right side, we're going to get 1 times x squared minus x. So if we distribute, we end up with 4x squared minus 4 equals 1 times x squared, so x squared minus x. So now let's go ahead and move all our terms to one side. So we have x squared, so we're going to subtract that from both sides. And when we do that, we get 3x squared, right? Because this is just a 1x squared. 3x squared minus 4 equals, and then here, x squared and minus x squared cancel. And that equals negative x. So now to solve this, we need to add x to both sides, right? Because quadratics, we want to always set equal to 0. So we have 3x squared plus x minus 4 equals 0. So now we need to figure out how to solve this quadratic. Um, so we have... Let's see, 3x squared plus x minus 4 equals 0. So I'm going to use the a times c method. Um, we have 3 times negative 4, so that equals negative 12. We need two factors of negative 12 that are going to add up to 1, right? Because that's a 1x. So it, um, since it's negative, I'm going to have a positive and a negative factor. Since 1 is positive, my bigger factor is going to be positive. So let's list out the factors of 12. We have 1 and 12. Uh, 2 and 6, and then we have 3 and 4, and that's all my factors. So these add up to 11, these add up to 4, and then this adds up to 1. So minus 3 and 4 are the correct combination. So we have 3x squared minus 3x plus 4x minus 4 equals 0. So now we need to factor by grouping these terms. I'm going to put them into two groups. And so the GCF of the first set is going to be 3x. So if I factor out that 3x, I'm going to divide both these terms by 3x. And when I do that, I end up with 3x times, these cancel, and then x squared over x is x, minus 3x over 3x is 1. And then we have plus, let's go ahead and factor out a 4. So we have 4x over 4 minus 4 over 4. And so that's plus 4 times x minus 1, and that equals 0, okay? So let's pull out that common factor of that x minus 1. So we have x minus 1 times 3x, right? 3x plus 4 uh, is what we have remaining. So 3x plus 4 equals 0. We're going to set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. So we're going to add 1 to both sides, which gives us x equals 1. And then we're going to subtract 4, 3x equals negative 4, and then divide both sides by 3. So when we do that, x equals negative 4 over 3. Remember that we always have to go back and check for those extraneous solutions, right? We don't want any of those extraneous solutions floating around in our final answer. So let's plug this back in. We have x squared minus x over x squared minus 1 equals 4. So if I plug in 1, which was my first solution, I get 1 squared minus 1 over 1 squared minus 1, and that equals 4. Um, so that tells me we have 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1, and look, we have one of those 0 over 0 situations, um, and that does not even equal 4. So that is a completely nonsense solution. That's my extraneous solution, so I'm going to leave it out. Um, so now we're going to plug in that negative 4 thirds. So we have negative 4 thirds squared minus negative 4 thirds, and that is over negative 4 thirds squared minus 1. So when we do negative 4 thirds squared, we have 16 over 9, and then this minus negative will become a plus, so we have plus 4 thirds, 
and that is over 16 over 9 minus 1. That equals 4. So we have 16 over 9 plus 4 over 3. And I'm just doing this on my calculator. That gives me 28 over 9 in the numerator. And then in my denominator, I have 16 over 9 minus 1. Um, once again, using my calculator, which gives me 7 over 9. And that equals 4. So now to divide these, I'm just going to flip it and multiply by the reciprocal. And when I do that, you can see these nines cancel. So that tells me that 28 over 7 equals 4, which does tell me that 4 equals 4. So that is a good solution. Okay, so x equals negative 4 over 3 is the solution to this problem. So now what if your rational equation looks like this, right? So this looks a little bit more like something we would solve with a proportion and something that you're a little bit used to seeing. So what we would do is we do our crisscross multiply. Okay, so we're going to multiply on the left. So we have 3 times x plus 16. Multiply on the right. So we have that equals x times x plus 5. So we're going to distribute. So we have 3x plus 3 times 16, which is 48. Then we do x times x. So we have x squared plus x times 5, which is 5x. Once again, we have a quadratic. So we're going to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. So I have 48 equals x squared plus 2x. And then I'm going to subtract 48 from both sides. And that gives me 0 equals x squared plus 2x minus 48. So now I'm going to solve this by factoring. I have negative 48, and I need two factors of negative 48 that are going to add up to positive 2. Well, since 48 is negative, I'm going to have a positive and a negative factor. Since 2 is fat, uh, positive, my po bigger factor is going to be positive. So I'm going to say, let's see, the factors are 1 and 48. Make the smaller ones negative. 2 and 24. 3 and 16. And 4 and 12. 6 and 8. And those are all my factors. So these add up to 47. 2 and a uh, negative 2 and 24 is 22. These are 13. Negative 4 and 12 is 8. Negative 6 and 8 is 2. So that isn't the combination that I need. So this tells me that 0 equals x minus 6 times x plus 8. So I can now set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. So I'm going to add 6 to both sides over here. So that tells me that x equals 6. And then I'm going to subtract uh, 8 from both sides over here, which tells me that x equals negative 8. So now I need to go and plug back into my original equation. I have x plus 5 over x over 3 equals x plus 16 over x. So I'm going to first start off by plugging in my x equals 6. So I have 6 plus 5 over 3 equals 6 plus 16 over 6. So that tells me that 11 over 3 equals 22 over 6, which is in fact true. So x equals 6 is a good solution. Um, now let's try our x equals negative 8. So we have negative 8 plus 5 over 3 equals negative 8 plus 16 over negative 8. So that tells us that negative 3 over 3 equals 8 over negative 8, which tells us that negative 1 equals negative 1 which is also good, so x equals negative 8 and x equals 6 are both solutions. Okay, so now let's try this problem. Let's try solving for p, so we have another rational equation. So once again, we're going to crisscross multiply. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So on the left side, we have p plus 3 times p plus 5. Right side, we have p minus 2 times p minus 7. So we have two binomials, so we're going to go ahead and use FOIL. So on the left side, first times first, p squared plus outside p times 5 is 5p, plus inside 3 times p is 3p, plus 3 times 5 is 15. And that equals, on the right side, we have first times first, which is p squared, and then we have minus 7 times p, so minus 7p, Inside, we have minus 2 times p, so minus 2p, and then minus 2 times minus 7 plus 14. 
So now let's simplify what we have. We have p squared plus, these two become 8p plus 15 equals p squared minus 7p minus 2p minus 9p and then plus 14. So now let's go ahead and combine all our terms and work on solving this. So I'm gonna subtract p squared from both sides. And when we do that, we get 8p plus 15 equals negative 9p plus 14. And so now I'm gonna add 9p to both sides. And when I do that, I get 17p plus 15 equals 14. And then now, once I have 17p plus 15 equals 14, we're gonna subtract 15 from both sides. And when we do that, we get 17p equals negative one. We're gonna divide both sides by 17, which gives us p equals negative one over 17. So let's make sure that this is a good solution. We just go back and plug into our original problem. So negative one over 17 minus two over negative one over 17 plus three. And we're checking if that equals negative one over 17 plus five over negative one over 17 minus seven. So we do negative one over 17 minus two. And that gives me negative 35 over 17. Okay, and then we do negative one over 17 plus three, and that gives us 50 over 17. And we're checking if that equals, let's see, negative one over 17 plus five. Which is 84 over 17 and that's over negative one over 17 minus seven, which is negative 120 over 17. Okay, so now we just flip and multiply these fractions. So negative 35 over 17 times 17 over 50. And we're checking if that equals 84 over 17 times 17 over negative 120. So these will cancel. We have negative 35 over 50 and we're checking if that equals 84 over negative 120. Negative 35 over 50 simplifies to negative seven over 10, and 84 divided by 120 simplifies to also negative seven over 10. So this is in fact true. So that means that negative one over 17 is a valid solution, right? It's not extraneous, it's good. Checks out in the original problem. So now go ahead and pause the video and try this example on your own. So in this example, we're gonna um, put that two X over one so that we can crisscross multiply. So on the left side, I'm gonna get two X times X minus two. And then on the right side, I have one times three X squared minus 12. So if I distribute this two X, I'm gonna get two X squared minus two X times two, so that's four X and that equals three x squared minus 12. So I'm gonna subtract three x squared from both sides. And when I do that, I get negative one x squared minus four x equals negative 12. Now I can add 12 to both sides and I am gonna get negative one x squared minus four x plus 12 equals zero. So I don't like having that leading coefficient being negative, so I'm just gonna factor out that negative one. So I'm just gonna divide every term by negative one, so that's gonna be x squared plus four x minus 12. Um, that equals zero. And then what I can do is I can divide both sides by negative one, and so that gives me x squared plus four x minus 12 equals zero. Okay, that's just something I did because I don't like having that leading coefficient being negative. Um, so now I can factor this, I have negative 12, Okay, so I need two factors of negative 12 that add up to four. Since 12 is negative, I'm gonna have a positive and negative factor. Since four is positive, I'm gonna make my bigger factor positive. So I have one and 12, and I have two and six, three and four. And so these two add up to 11, negative two and six add up to four, so that is my correct combination. So I have x minus two times x plus six 
equals zero, which tells me that x minus two equals zero, so x equals two, or x plus six equals zero, so x equals negative six. So remember, we need to go back and plug these into our original equation. So if we plug in two, we get three times two squared minus 12 over two minus two equals two times two. You can probably already see a problem here. You can see that this denominator is gonna be zero, right? So we'll end up with 12 minus 12 over zero, and that is already a problem. So that is gonna be our extraneous solution. Let's just double check the negative six to make sure that it's good. So we have three times negative six squared minus 12 um, over negative six minus two, and we're checking if that equals two times negative six. So we have three times, let's see, 36 minus 12 over negative eight equals negative 12. Um, so three times 36 is 108 minus 12 over negative eight. That equals negative 12. And then 108 minus 12 is 96. 96 over negative eight does in fact equal negative 12. So this is a good and valid solution. Okay, so x equals negative 6 is the solution to this equation. All right, so to solve rational equations, you're going to use crisscross multiply, just like you did when you were solving proportions. Then you're going to solve for the variable, and remember to check if you have any extraneous solutions.